Hi, this is Roger Marsh for Family Talk. With Valentine's Day this week, we want to know, how romantic are you? Go now to drjamesdobson.org and take our romance quiz. Now, this is a fun activity. It's going to show you just how much you adore your spouse. After you're finished, we will email you a copy of Dr. Dobson's five romance tips as well. So hurry over to drjamesdobson.org and take our Valentine's Day quiz and recapture the romance in your relationship. Today on Family Talk. Thank you for being with us. This is Dr. James Dobson, and you're listening to Family Talk. You know, these radio broadcasts are a ministry of James Dobson Family Institute. I want to tell you, I'm having so much fun doing this program, and I hope that you're enjoying listening to it as well. We have a really important program to talk to you about today, and I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to find it very meaningful. In Ephesians, Paul lays out a very clear guideline for how men are to treat women in the confines of marriage. And here's what he wrote in chapter 5, verses 25 to 29. He said, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church." These scriptures are very clear about the love and care husbands must give their wives. Today's guest on Family Talk has devoted his life to ministering to men, and he's good at it. He's going to help us today to understand how to treasure our marriage. His name is Dr. Steve Farrar, and he founded Men's Leadership Ministries and has spoken in hundreds of conferences throughout North America. Dr. Farrar has authored 16 books, most notably Point Man, How a Man Can Lead His Family. If you haven't read that, get a copy of it. He also produced a video series geared to men called Straight Talk, Real Men, Real Life. Steve holds a master's degree from Western Seminary, and he also has a doctorate from Dallas Theological Seminary. And he and his wife, Mary, live in Dallas, Texas, and they have three grown children. In a moment, Dr. Farrar is going to describe Satan's deep hatred for marriage. If you don't believe that, take a look around and see what is being said and done to attack the institution of marriage. Uh, He's going to talk also about how we can protect and honor our relationships within marriage. Staying completely committed to one person for a lifetime can be a difficult thing. I want to tell you honestly, and you may not believe this, but it's true, that uh, Shirley and I have really never had a serious conflict in that time. We fuss like everybody else does, but we have never come to a point where we felt like it wasn't going to work. Now, we've been married now for 59 years. We're going to have our 59th anniversary this August, and uh, I love her as much as I did the first year we were married, and I'm just grateful for her. Enjoy being with her. Not everybody has been that successful in marital relationships. And if you're one of those uh, people who have struggled quite a bit, pay attention because Dr. Farrar really has some good things to say. And I hope you'll find encouragement from this broadcast and stay committed to your spouse and build a lasting relationship. Make no mistake about it. This presentation is not just for men, but it's going to be meaningful to women as well. I can't think of a better time to air this two-part presentation with Valentine's Day just a few days away. Dr. Farrar's message was given to nearly 50,000 men at a Promise Keepers event in Charlotte, North Carolina. That was some years ago, but I want to tell you this message is evergreen. 
and I hope you'll find it that way. Here now is Dr. Steve Farrar on this edition of Family Talk. A young polar bear was out fishing one morning with his dad. Not a lot was happening, and as they were waiting for a bite, young polar bear said, Dad, can I ask you a question? His father said, well, sure, son, what is it? He said, Dad, am I 100% polar bear? His dad said, well, sure, you're 100% polar bear. I'm 100% polar bear. My folks, 100% polar bear. My grandparents, all the way up the line, you're 100%. Your mother, she's 100% polar bear. Her folks, her grandparents, both sides, son, you're 100% polar bear. And then he thought for me, he said, son, why would you ask if you're 100% polar bear? Little guy looked at his dad and he said, dad, I'm freezing out here. <laughs> hey, how many of you guys are 100% married? Let me see your hands. All right, that's great. You know, sometimes even though we're 100% married, we don't, always, we don't always feel married. I heard about a guy recently in Dallas where I live, and he had, had a, he had a horrible week. On Monday, he found out a deal he'd been working on for several months and he'd been counting on, fell through. He wasn't going to get the commission. On Tuesday, he missed a major deadline because of some things beyond his control. His boss got on him. On, on, by, by Wednesday, all he wanted to do was just survive till Friday. Things just kept getting worse. And all he wanted to do is he said in his office Wednesday afternoon, he said, I just want to make it to Friday. I want to get home. I, I just want to get home, have some dinner, and, and watch the ball game. Well, he finally made it to Friday. Things did get worse. He's in traffic going home. It's gridlock. It's like he's coming to Promise Keepers. It's unbelievable. He walks in the door, finally gets home, walks in the door, and there's his wife standing there, and she's all dressed up, obviously, ready to go. And she can tell by his face he doesn't have a clue. And she said, sweetheart, you obviously forgot we're having dinner with the Wilsons. He said, oh, no. He said, I don't want to. She said, sweetheart, we've canceled twice. We have to go. He said, okay. Let me just get a quick shower and a shave. Why don't you pull the car around front and we'll go? She said, fine. He gets in the shower, shaves, he walks out, and his wife is standing by the car next to it, and the car is running. She's got a strange look on, on her face, and, and she says, sweetheart, I'm sorry, I locked the keys in the car. Well, you know what? That, that was it. The guy just lost it. You guys ever heard of something called displaced anger? All the anger from what had happened at the office that week just came out on his wife, and he looked at her and he said, you know, he said, honey, I don't know how God could make someone so beautiful, yet so cotton picking stupid. A harsh thing to say. But she knew this guy, and she knew he was under pressure, and she said, well, sweetheart, I'm sure it's for our benefit. <laughs> and he looked at her, and she said, you know, I believe God made me beautiful so you could love me, and he made me stupid so I could love you. I couldn't believe it when Mary said that to me. <laughs> you know, gentlemen, this is great to see all these guys here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's great to see what God is doing. And gentlemen, we all, we all need to understand something, that as we gather here, if you're a guy who loves your wife, if you're a guy who loves your kids, you need to understand that as you follow Christ, you need to understand, my friend, that we're at war. The scriptures have told us in Ephesians chapter 6, the church has always been at war. But it seems over the last few decades that the enemy has trained his full assault forces on the Christian family. There is an enemy out there who is very, very real. And there's an enemy, gentlemen, who has, I believe, a two-fold strategy for you. He has a two-fold strategy for me. And just quickly, let me tell you what the two-fold strategy is. Number one, he wants to alienate and eventually sever the relationship that you enjoy with your wife. America has the highest divorce rate in the world. We, it used to be our laws kept families from divorcing. But then we changed our laws and we've made it easy for men and women to leave their commitments. The scripture says this, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and the two shall become one. That's God's plan. You and your wife are one flesh. 
If you love Jesus Christ, there's an enemy who hates your guts. Campus Crusade has a little booklet. It's been used to lead people to Christ all over the world called the Four Spiritual Laws. Law one says God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life, and that's true. But if you love Jesus Christ, you have an enemy, and let me tell you what his plan. He hates your guts, and he wants to bring your marriage down. God says the two shall become one. The enemy wants to take the two who have become one and make them two again. He wants divorce to hit your home. Now, we've got divorce guys here. And I want to tell you something. I'm glad you're here. Some of the most teachable guys I've ever met in my life are guys that have been through the heartbreak of a divorce. We're glad you're here. But those of us who are married, those of us who are remarried, we don't want that to happen. We want to be aware of what the enemy is up to in our lives. We're at war, guys. That's why I was in the shower one morning. I wish I was in the shower right now, to be honest with you. A cold shower. I was in the shower one morning and I was thinking about the fact of the families at war and how many families are going down. And I thought about the fact that if, that if you're a husband and father, you know, a lot of you guys were in the military. Some of you guys were of my generation. Some of you guys were over in Vietnam. And some of you guys know what it is on a particular day to be chosen. And you're going to lead on that day a small patrol. Maybe it's a reconnaissance mission. But you're the point man. You're walking the point. And, and your leadership is critical to the survival of your men. Well, we're at war in this nation over the family. And if you're a husband and father, you're the point man. You're not leading a bunch of guys. You're leading your wife and kids through the moral chaos of a nation that's lost its moral compass. And the enemy is trying to bring us down, gentlemen. That's the fact of the matter. You know, I'm just curious. How many, I'm just curious. This would be interesting to know. How many guys here served our nation over in Vietnam? Let's see your hands. Why don't you guys stand up for a minute? Yeah. That's right. Now that's what should have happened when you guys came home. We appreciate what you did. That's right. Let's thank those guys. appreciate you guys so much. Now, you know, you just didn't have to be in... Hey, you know what? There have been other wars. There have been other conflicts. Maybe you were in Operation Desert Storm. You walked the point over there. Uh, maybe you were in World War II. Maybe you were in the Korean conflict. I see a gentleman over here who was in the Civil War. <laughs> we're glad you're here, sir. We're glad you're breathing. Guys, the point is, we're at war. And here's what the enemy wants to do to every Christian guy in this room. He wants to neutralize me. He wants me to keep me from leading. Our issue right now is on, is on the marriage relationship, gentlemen. We used to have laws in this nation that made it hard to divorce. We were watching an old movie from the 40s not too long ago, and the whole plot of the movie, a guy was a businessman and had a nice family, several kids, you know, beautiful wife. He got involved with a secretary at the office, decided he was in love with her, and wanted to divorce his wife and marry a secretary. But the movie was set in 1948. The whole plot of the movie was his wife wouldn't grant him a divorce. Because in 1948, if a guy wanted to leave his wife on a whim, the law prevented him from doing that. And you couldn't do it in 1958. But in the 60s and 70s, things started changing in this nation, and we came up with something called no-fault divorce. About a year ago, my wife called me. I picked up the phone, and as soon as I heard her voice, I knew something was wrong, and she said, Steve, I've had an accident. When I heard that my wife had been involved in an automobile accident, I had two questions. Question number one was, you know what it was, are you all right? She assured me she was fine. Okay, we established that. Gentlemen, what was my second question? 
I knew there were godly men in this, uh, in this room. <laughs> yeah, my second question was, Mary, whose fault was it? You know what she told me? She said, Steve, I'm driving down LBJ in North Dallas on the freeway, about 55, this guy's next to me, and all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, these two cars, metaphysically on their own, decided to come together of their own volition. It was nobody's fault, Steve. I said, makes sense to me. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, when she told me she was stopped and someone hit her from behind, it was clear whose fault was it. You know what, gentlemen? We can't make our spouses do what's right. We need to be concerned about, about ourselves doing what's right. You know, gentlemen, this is called, I love what Swindoll said a couple years ago. He said, this, this thing is not called promise makers, it's called promise keepers. That's what distinguishes this from the world. You see, you guys, when we walked down that aisle and we made that vow to our wife, we said something like this. We said that we would be committed for, we would be committed for better or worse, in sickness and in health, for richer or poorer. You know, gentlemen, anybody can be committed. Anybody can be committed when it's better. But the test of commitment is when it's worse, worse than you ever thought it would be. Anybody can be committed when it's richer. But it's the test of commitment is when you lost your job or when the money's not there. Anybody can be committed when there's health. But the test of commitment is when there's sickness. We need some men in this nation who are men who will follow through with their commitments. We need to see a revival in this nation. And this is why God is filling stadiums around this nation. He's looking for some guys to follow through and to finish strong for him and their marriages. Why is it that the divorce rate among Christians is almost the same as among non-Christians? It's because we have an enemy, gentlemen. I have the privilege every year of uh, speaking to three or four NFL teams. Every NFL team, five hours before kickoff, has a, a chapel service. And earlier this year, actually last, last year in the fall, I was up in Wisconsin, so I did a, a, a chapel service for the Packers. And it was, I was at Lambeau Field. And you know, it's a great old stadium. I don't think they'll ever build a new stadium in Green Bay. There's just too much atmosphere there. But across the street, the Packers have built a beautiful multi-million dollar facility. Indoor fields, AstroTurf, it's state of the art. One of the things you'll find there is that they have some small theaters. Uh, people that don't know a lot about football have a misconception. They think football coaches and football players spend the majority of their time outside. Especially in the NFL, that's not true. Football players and coaches spend the majority of their time inside in the dark. Why? They're watching film. The average NFL team, I've been told, will watch their upcoming opponent. They'll watch the last three or four games, and they won't watch it just once. They'll watch it two and three times. One of those coaches will be in that film room at one in the morning watching that film for the sixth time, and all of a sudden he'll say, hey, look, look at, look at number 66. Look at that guard. Every time that guy runs that sweep, look at his stance. Every time he runs that sweep, he sets his stance. Look at his left foot. He sets up six inches back with his left foot. Run it again. He doesn't do that on the other. See, and so he tells his linebacker, you key off 66. Watch his left foot. When he sets his left foot back, that's your tip. He's going to run that sweep. Why, why do they watch so much film? I'm going to tell you why, guys. They want to know their opponent, and they want to know his habits. They want to know his tendencies. They want to know his weaknesses. Let me tell you guys something. Satan watches your game films, and he watches mine, and he knows my habits. He knows my tendencies. He knows my weaknesses. He knows that when I get tired, I get irritable. He knows that I can be impatient. He knows that it's very easy for me just to fly and say a harsh word without thinking to my wife. I did that earlier this week. I spoke in Atlanta four weeks ago, and the same thing happened to me. Every time before I come to speak on one of these things about marriage, I screw up. I do. I'm just being honest with you. And let me, and let me say something about that. Gentlemen, the easiest thing in the world is to stand up here and teach this stuff. The hardest thing in the world is to go home and live it out. But that's what we're called to do.
Hey, I'm going to tell you something. The guys standing up here speaking, we're just guys. We deal with things like you deal with things. That's why the, fo the focus here is not on any individual except the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the perfect one. He's the one we focus on here at Promise Keeper. How, how, how can, how is it possible? The enemy is doing everything he can do. He knows my habits, my tendencies, my weaknesses. He knows how to drive a wedge between me and my wife. And, and how, is it, how is it that guys who start strong, how is it that they don't finish strong? It's because the enemy gets them off in their marriages. Hey, you know what? I want to I wanna hit the finish line married to the same woman that I'm married to today. And you do too. And again, you may say, Steve, I've already been picked off. I've already been through a divorce. I've been through two divorces. I've been through three divorces, and I'm on marriage number four. Well, then let me say this to you, my friend. By the power of the living spirit of, the, of Jesus Christ within you, you make this marriage work. You, you implement the principles. Let's finish strong with our commitments where we are right day. We can't go back to the past. All we can do is go forward. You see, we're talking about keeping commitments. In 1519, Hernando Cortez undertook a tremendous responsibility. Loaded 11 ships, hundreds of men, and went to Mexico. He didn't know what was awaiting him, but he felt like there was treasure. He felt like there was some conquest possibilities. They, they landed in Veracruz, and then the men unloaded their stuff, and as they were going up the cliffs and making their way, and they didn't know if they were going to live, they didn't know if they were going to be attacked, they didn't know if there were going to be diseases, but as they're going up that mountainside, as they got to the one of the guys yelled, and suddenly they looked back down in the bay, hundreds and hundreds of feet down, where they saw their 11 ships, and their 11 ships were all going up in flames. All 11 ships were burning, and there was not a thing they could do. What happened? How did the ships catch fire? Cortez set the ships on fire because what he did, he cut off, he burned the escape route. He made sure those guys were committed. They had to finish because there was no escape. Gentlemen, we need to burn our ships. Divorce isn't even in our vocabulary. It doesn't even exist. This is Roger Marsh, and what an incredible presentation from Dr. Steve Farrar here on Family Talk. Visit today's broadcast page to learn more about Dr. Farrar's ministry or his popular book called Anchor Man. That's drjamesdobson.org, and then click onto the broadcast icon at the top of the page. After you've gone to our website, be sure to check us out on our various social media pages as well. Search for Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Once you like or follow us, you'll be able to see all of our godly and encouraging content. You can listen to any of our broadcasts, hear Dr. Dobson's latest newsletter, or just enjoy the articles we've posted. We want to support your family and to help you grow in your personal walk with the Lord. So the next time you're discouraged by what you see online, be sure to take a break. With Family Talk, go to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram and search for Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Thanks for joining us today, and be sure to join us again tomorrow for the conclusion of Dr. Steve Farrar's fascinating presentation on going all out for your wife. You won't want to miss what he has to say coming up right here next time on Family Talk. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. This is Dr. Tim Clinton. Thank you for tuning in today for this edition of Family Talk. Every day we strive to bring you programs that will help strengthen your family. And to do this, we need your help. We need your prayers. And we also need your financial contributions. You know that Dr. Dobson has been fighting for the family for over 40 years now, and he's not about to stop, believe you me. Here's Roger Marsh with more information on how you can support the Ministry of Family Talk.
And friend, thanks to generous listeners like you, Family Talk can reach more and more listeners with practical help and encouragement. To support Family Talk with your best gift, go online to drjamesdobson.org or call 877-732-6825. Hi, this is Dr. Tim Clinton for the James Dobson Family Institute. Are you leaving a lasting and godly legacy? When you think about your family after you're gone, are you worried about them? Or are you confident they'll hold on to what you've taught them? At the Dobson Family Institute, we're committed to helping you understand the importance of passing on your faith, not only to your children, but to your children's children, too. Check out drjamesdobson.org today for helpful hints, tips, and advice to help make this happen. Remember this, your legacy matters. Don't waste 